Well, buckle up for another volatile week, says our next guest, as the markets await more earnings, jobs data, and of course the U.S. Fed's rate announcement later this week. And investors seek more answers on when tech companies will start to monetize artificial intelligence. For a look at all of this, including some of his picks, we're joined now by J.J. Kinahan, Chief Executive Officer of IG North America. J.J., thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, you've got some interesting thoughts on the big tech companies. Four of the biggest will report results uh, this week, including uh, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and Apple. And you think it's time that these companies start to show uh, their, the, uh, you know, at least a roadmap to monetizing their artificial intelligence initiatives. Well, it really is amazing. I, I, you know, I don't remember any other product that's had so much money spent on it in a short term, and obviously billions of AI. And you and I have both seen how cool it can be. But overall, it really hasn't, and nobody's truly, in my opinion, monetized it yet in a way that makes sense to match up with the investment that's happened so far. And I think we're getting to a point now where investors are like, all right, it's really cool, and we understand how the chip companies are doing really well, but how about everybody else who are actually going out and spending all this money? And I think this is the, questions, the question primarily investors are going to be asking uh, at this analyst call overall. There has to be some sort of accountability for what you're spending all the money on and how is it leading to growth within the walls of the companies. And, and part of this uh, uh, perhaps is, you can, you can tell me, is this uh, turning away from the mega cap uh, tech stocks towards the smaller cap stocks. Everybody's talking about it. We talked about it with our previous guest, the rally in the Russell 2000. Is this durable, this, this, uh, this uh, preference the market is now displaying for smaller cap stocks? Well, I, I think that, you know, as we've, if you look through the history, and you and I have both been doing this a long time, uh, you know that the small caps have to participate and in some ways lead the way in order for us to go higher. So it's probably not a terrible thing for people to take some profits in some of these big tech stocks and then reinvest in the smaller cap stocks. Now, with that said, I think that uh, runway may be a little bit more limited longer term. We'll see how the earnings turn out because we are actually seeing a pretty good earnings season overall. I think what it is is the you know returns have just been so outsized in some of these bigger cap stocks that people are at least taking part of their position off. And that's not a bad thing, by the way, even if they return, you know, continue to return higher after earnings. And there is some nervousness, in my opinion, around these earnings as we start to see companies in other industries talk about the fact that the uh, retail consumer is starting to pull back a little bit in some of their spending. And so that has some downstream implications. And one of the implications may be for technology spending going forward. What do you expect to be the tone of the Fed announcement uh, later this week? I believe it's Wednesday. Uh, uh, nobody expects a rate cut, but a lot of people now expect a September rate cut. Well, a September rate cut, in fact, if you look at the CME Fed Watch tool, is right near 100 percent. So really, they have uh, it's a bad situation to walk into when you have nothing to gain. Right. You, you never want to be the uh, one that. Uh, goes into there, but I would say that the you know that the Fed has been pretty disciplined about what they said. I, what they say, I would expect the same sort of messaging. We'll continue to watch the numbers. We'll make sure that inflation doesn't get out of control. You know, the market itself is pretty much discounting uh, inflation at this point. When you are, as I just said, close to 100 percent on a September rate cut overall, so I would expect the Fed to go in say guarded things, try not to get uh, anywhere where they're off step, if you will. You've got some thoughts, as always, on stocks you like and some stocks you don't like that much. One you like is J.P. Morgan Chase. Well, J.P. Morgan has had, you know, in fact, we see our clients right now, Paul, almost 75 percent of their activity has been bullish on this stock. Really impressive. You know, the list you just showed up there, it looks like it could be 1988 with the stocks we have up there with J.P. Morgan, GE and Coca-Cola being three of the stocks most liked by our clients and really people buying uh, on those. J.P. Morgan came out last week, you know, speaking of AI, with something saying that they, they have a tool that could take an analyst place. Well, this could be so big in a few different ways, not only in terms of money saving perhaps for employees, 
but also scalable and that the average person will have much better information overall. And that's the kind of thing that can really return, uh, you know, great dividends. We uh, you talk about GE. I mean, what a story this has been in, in terms of getting rid of all these other businesses, really focusing on aerospace and doing an amazing job overall. And then Coca-Cola, you know, I, I, I think this is a story that people haven't really given enough credit to. 15% organic growth in the second quarter. That's absolutely amazing. Who would think that of a, a stock like Coca-Cola overall? You don't necessarily think, oh my gosh, they're going to do some great organic growth. But to me, that was probably one of the best stories we've seen that wasn't really as widely covered as I think maybe it should have been. Let's talk about some stocks uh, where you are cautious, uh, to say the least. You, ca you call them your top bearish trades, Hewlett Packard, uh, Las Vegas Sands, and Southwest Airlines. Yeah, and I, Southwest Airlines, I would say, and again, this is what I see from our clients, is probably the one that surprises me the most. And the reason I say that is uh, I thought that actually their announcement last week about uh, you know, the, the, the way they do seating and going to more assigned seating might be a little bit better received. But again, you know, the airlines, it's just a tough, tough business to be involved with overall. So that one surprises me the most. Uh, you know, Las Vegas Sands being one where they just had a really, really tough uh, se second quarter. And so it, 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 we talk about the consumer in so many different ways. Well, this is one area where the consumer just isn't responding. They, they're getting people in the door. They're not just not getting people to the places that they make money within the casinos.